Probably been made an officer of the New Zealand Merit, awarded for his contribution across film, television and theatre, and he's been described as a national treasure due to his enduring roles in Whale Rider and The Insatiable Moon. Now about to star in the acclaimed Te Paul, please welcome to the cafe, Rawiri Paratene. Welcome! Oh. And it's lovely to have you back here in the studio with us. Uh, last time you were here for, was it Pura Pura Fetu that you were talking yeah, about? Yeah. Uh, so now you're, you're keeping busy, you've got things going on. Yep. So tell us a little bit about this show. Okay, Te Po is a play written by Carl Bland and is part of the Night Song production repertoire. And uh, it's crazy. Yeah. It's, it's magic, it's madcap, it's um, mystical. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's beautiful. It, um, it'll, it'll get you, I can't say it, but it's a mind thing. Okay, yeah, oh good. Know. Oh. Yeah, so it's it's challenging. Like it it asks the basic questions, like, do we really exist? <gasps> so how do we Is, come out of there? How are we going to come out of there feeling? What's going to be going on? Hopefully, here? with a hat full of um, questions yeah. and um, and uh, feeling entertained. Yeah, nice. that's so a you're nice. You're going to go nice home company. asking some questions, which yeah. is good. No, I like that. Oh, well, what's your role in the play? Okay, I play Weddy here, who's. Uh, this old codger. Yeah. So that's what this is all about. <laughs> this old codger who uh, spends a lot of time on Takapuna Beach. I went out there um, last weekend to do my spiritual research. And uh, he's actually, Weddy here is actually a character from Bruce Mason's play, Awatea. And uh, he's in this play as well. Wow. Yeah, and uh, it's beautiful. It's, it's, there's a lot of te reo Māori in it. Beautiful. Which is great, you know, it's great that mm. te reo is being normalised now. Well, no, and you've been a great ambassador for that over the years as well. Are we getting better at that, Rawari? Acknowledging it? Um, using it, hopefully. One would hope so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Using it, hopefully. Because I, I did a little bit of talk back recently, and geez, when you start mentioning compulsory te reo in schools, the callers, they come out and they're oh, always yeah. like, oh, don't shove that down my throat. Yeah. Yeah, compulsory is a tricky word, which um, brings out that kind of response. I, I think using the term core subject is is better, better, yes. okay, cool, and truer. Nice. And uh, yeah, I look forward to. Uh, I think it's going to happen in my lifetime, Good. where all New Zealanders um, are given the opportunity to to learn and utilise our native language. And embrace it. Yeah. Uh, let's go back to the show. Um, mm, you, it's, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's my fault. <laughs> Bring you back on track, boys. Uh, but that was really interesting. There, you sing in this as well. So you, have you done much musical theatre? Yeah, I've done a fair bit um, back in the day. Um, yeah, I played, I think I might have been the first professional Joseph and Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dream. Don't coat. get him started. Oh, the old, somebody else yeah. also played Joseph. The old, yeah. um, the old Mercury Theatre. Brilliant. Did you play Joseph? Yeah, I was Joseph down in Tapanui in oh, Southland. Wow. Yeah, when, when, was was your, when was your Joseph? 75 ish. Yeah. Oh, no, I was about to say, no, I didn't too. see that one yeah. at school. Yeah. Oh, fascinating. I didn't know you had that background of singing because we don't associate you with singing. Uh, well, now, though. <clears throat> yeah, it's, uh, it's daunting singing to. A lot of actors is akin to being in the nude. You know, it's, it's <laughs> you're vulnerable. Uh, yeah, you're yeah. vulnerable. <laughs> but it's uh, it's great. I enjoy singing. I enjoy listening to singing and and being part of it. So uh, if you're really interested in uh, in getting me as a singer, uh, book to see Te Po. Nice. No, and speaking of the show, uh, who else is in it? Uh, Carl Bland, yeah. the writer, and Andrew Granger, who's also a, a musical star. Just the three of us, wow. and some puppets. Nice. But I don't want to give too much. No, 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 that's good. Making this more intriguing by the moment. No, yeah, it George, is intriguing. George Nardi was originally in this, is that right? Yeah. So did you see that I wasn't that available, so they had to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you see that one? No, no, I was touring around the world. Being famous. No, going to every country in the world. Oh, with Hamlet. With yeah, Hamlet. let's talk yeah. about that you for know, a moment. Let's do that, because that is a true statement. I mean, it must have been one of those roles, because I, I, you know, I heard that it was one of the first things that you ever saw. Yeah. And now here you are travelling around the world. That must be quite an honour doing that on various stages. It was amazing. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
It was with Shakespeare's Globe um, on Bankside in London, that company. And uh, yeah, we went to, we took it to 197 countries. Good so not, not quite every country. So we weren't allowed in countries like Syria, Central African Republic, so um, just no. too dangerous. But what we did was we played to audiences from those places in um, refugee camps. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And what was the most Amazing. surprising country for you that really embraced it that you didn't think perhaps would? Ooh, the most surprising, that's a great question. Bhutan, yeah, um, oh, all through the Caribbean, boy did they embrace it. They were just amazing audiences, um, you know, because they they joined in. Wow. Yeah, they, um, they participated and commented and felt free enough. Yeah, it was great. Which I is was, a rare opportunity for them, really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. and it's very Elizabethan. Right. You know, when, the, when Shakespeare plays were being done at the original Globe, uh, the audiences were very much part of it. So you've ticked off quite a lot in your career, and here you are travelling around the world doing something like Shakespeare. You mentioned earlier the, the spiritual research. So what sort of spiritual research would you do for, for the Globe Theatre? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I do. I use that term, spiritual research, and it's, it usually is enta it entails something. So a big part of this, this play that I'm in happens at Takapuna Beach. Right. And um, I'm a, this old codger who goes down there fishing every day. And um, I realise it's not a beach that I know very well, so I went out there last weekend and walked the, the whole beach, which, you know, with a lot of other people and, and their dogs. Right. <laughs> and I went down to the south end of the beach and just around the corner where there are some rocks and, and I realised that this is the place that is referred to in the play. Right. Yeah, okay, so I was cool. able, able to make a connection. Uh, and you recently also did a solo show for the first, in what, 45 years? You did your own solo show. <laughs> I mean, what on earth inspired you to do that and how was it? Um, <clears throat> oh, it was great fun. When I say solo show, I did have a band. <laughs> oh, OK. Yeah, so, so it was there me and four musicians, yeah. So you were singing through that one as well? No. They were. They were. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I sang a bit. Yeah. How, how did you find the challenge of doing doing you know a solo show? It was a bit like this show. It was a chat show. Right. Yeah. So um, you know, and um, just evolved. It, yeah. So it involved the audience, and so I'd be sitting there, and uh, I'd get to a part in the in the show, and then I'd say, "So, has anyone got any questions?" and people in the audience would have questions. One night, a um, good friend of mine uh, who's working on this show, John Gibson, um, musical director extraordinaire, and he was in the audience, and we'd written a lot of stuff together back in the day. And uh, so I got him in and brought him onto the stage with me and uh, sat him on the couch, and we did a a rhythm song that we'd written together. Wow, it was good fun. Yeah, 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 I bet. So you were also the first Māori graduate from uh, Toi Whakaari, uh, Toi Toi Whaka Whaka but Toi Whakaari, Whaka weren't you? Yeah. Um, drama school. So did you actually turn up to one of your auditions? I was reading this in your rugby gear. Yeah. That's, yep. that's, that's not a myth? That's actually no. real? No. At the, uh, at the audition to get into the, to get into the school, um, in the letter that they sent out, they said to bring... Um, you know, physical gear to bring warm-up gear. And so you know, I was like 17 and my idea of physical gear, the only idea I had was stuff I wore to rugby training. <laughs> so I walked into the room, I had shorts, I had an old rugby shirt, I had a headband, um, socks and sand shoes and uh, walked into the room and I was surrounded by people in leotards and tights. <laughs> and, uh, and the panel that was selecting us were there right in front of us. And I looked at the panel and then I turned around and looked at the other candidates, if you, if you may. And I said, oh, well, they're going to certainly know who I am. <laughs> <laughs> Standing oh, exactly. out. Oh, Love absolutely. it. Oh, well, thank you so much for joining yeah, us today. It's always welcome. good to have you in for a chat. Te Pō is playing at Q Theatre from the 25th of October to the 4th of November. For all the details, head along to their website.